section in the real estate contract, this is our purchase price section, it doesn't really match reality a lot of times. So the purchase price set forth below is payable in US dollars as follows. This number down here, where we see these totals, I think I'm on page four. Yeah. Um, these totals are gonna to be the sale price for the property. So remember, we're buying a $300,000 house that's costing us 310, 309 something. You're not gonna see 309 in either of these boxes. You're gonna see 300 in these boxes. Those other fees are your loan closing costs and your real estate closing costs. They don't show up here, they're on top of here. So it's yet another space where we don't do a good job of saying, you're spending 310 on a $300,000 house because right here in your contract, it says you're paying 300 for the house. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. So know that this section will be as close to reality as we can get it, but it's not actual reality. Our actual reality is going to come from our lender and we're going to get a settlement statement. It's going to be as early in the process as we can get it and it's going to be as close to accurate as we can get it up front. But know that these numbers, when you look through these details and you're thinking, why doesn't this add up to 309,750? It's not intended to. Um, we might get asked at some point about a seller concession. So the seller can say, hey, I'll take $300,000 for my house and I'll give you 5,000 back. Meaning I'm taking 295 for my house, not 300. A buyer would do that because they don't have enough down payment or they don't have enough cash necessarily to complete the whole transaction or they want to save some of their cash for curtains and blinds and moving expenses and this, this cash won't stretch over both buckets. Um, so they may offer to pay more for the house but get some back from the seller. I doubt in our current market we're going to be using this section. Sellers just are not required to give anything to a buyer right now. So this is your earnest money. It says it's held in a trust account on behalf of buyer and seller. Um, and it says that, that the, um, really how it'll be disposed of, how it'll be given back to people if it needs to be given back. If buyer has a right to terminate, timely terminates, buyer's entitled to the return of the earnest money as provided in the contract. And it kind of gives you some reasons. And so I, I told you there may be a seller who contests that. And so this would be why. I'm gonna to go to the last section of the contract, very last statement in here. Good golly, that's long. Um, section 29, I guess section 30, this is where I get to type stuff up. I get to type anything I want in there. We'll talk about what we type. Um, this becomes part of the contract. I'm not an attorney, so I don't do a great job of making it legal. It's really our common language, and we're just typing it up saying, hey, seller, we'd like this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the seller says, I don't want to give you any of that stuff. And that's what this section is for. But the last section of the contract, good faith, buyer and seller acknowledge each party has an obligation to act in good faith, not including to exercising the rights and obligations set forth. And so what they mean by that is, if you're going to object to your inspection, object to your inspection, totally fine. Don't object to your inspection because you like the neighbor's house better and it just came on the market. Right now, I'm not operating in good faith anymore. I'm just terminating because I don't want your house anymore. Yeah. It's not based on anything. And so, if a seller knows that a buyer didn't operate in good faith, they may contest that earnest money. And so, that would be the section that that would be the that would be the greatest way to put your earnest money at risk, is to not operate in good faith. I don't think we've ever had to deal with that at all. Mm -hmm. We've had one earnest money that got forfeited from a buyer to a seller. We represented the seller. The buyer's agent didn't object to their inspection until a week after their deadline and said, hey, we don't want to buy the house anymore based on this, that, and the other. And they didn't even ask for their earnest money back because they knew they just missed their deadline. And that's the only time it's happened. Um, and I feel like if that if that buyer had asked, the seller was such a kind person, she probably probably would have said, well, here's your earnest money back. Let's, we're just going to sell our house to somebody else. Um, but So one time, hundreds of transactions. Mm 